Welcome to the second part of our video tutorial. Uh, in the first part we could show how to set up a SCADA project by simply importing existing web HMIs from PLCs. In the second part I would like to show how uh, we can also automatically uh, import trend and alarming configurations done in the web HMI on the PLC. We call this feature, which is a brand new feature, never been introduced before, uh, trend and alarm harvesting, because we can reuse existing configurations uh, on the PLC and therefore simplifying uh, the design development of a SCADA software on the PC uh, dramatically. We see here a uh, web visu project that was made using the web visit tool by Phoenix. And uh, so this HMI is located on the PLC and has an alarm uh, recording on the PLC. Uh, we have here a look at the online alarm list that is uh, generated directly on uh, the embedded hardware. We also have a trend here, um, which is uh, recorded at the PLC. This is uh, the second example that we know from our first tutorial. This is uh, the Vago PLC with the integrated codices. There is also some online trending in the configuration as well as a few alarms. And we're now going to reuse that. So we open our existing project uh, that we made in tutorial one. Um, in this tutorial we have imported web HMIs from a Vago PLC, so this is our actual driver configuration. The first driver is uh, the Vago, and here we have the thumbnails of the project HMI that we imported. The second is a Phoenix PLC, uh, which we've just uh, imported the complete project and uh, quite a few HMIs and also the trend records that come from there. So, what we're gonna do next is have a look at uh, the trend and the alarm configuration. This uh, we can do starting from our uh, overview page, from the start page, by clicking on alarm. Um, Trending. The first level that we can enter here is uh, defining uh, alarms manually. So we can select the, uh, the process points and define a condition uh, for which the alarm uh, would fire. So this is the tradi traditional way how uh, alarm configuration is done. Uh, now the revolution in alarm configuration is our alarm harvesting. Uh, this overview shows that from both PLCs we have uh, we were able to import alarm to find and import alarm configurations, and we can now define um, alarm ID offset to um, the alarm IDs that came from the PLC. From the PLC, alarm IDs usually begin with one. And because we have several PLCs, we can define an offset uh, in order to have a continuous um, alarm ID uh, space. So uh, the second PLC will start with an offset of uh, 100 and we'll now import uh, the first alarm configuration from the Vago PLC just by pressing the merge button. We do the same for the second PLC and if we now go back to the overview of all defined alarms, we see that we have now automatically uh, generated um, a, a valid working uh, configuration. The same uh, procedure can be done in a similar way for trends. So the manual way to define a trend is done using this dialog. Um, you can choose as well um, a process point that should be recorded as a trend. You can define the way how to record the trend. So we have a isochronous way of just some have a fixed sample rate, or there is a, a hysteresis um, based recording which triggers if the value changes by a certain amount. 
So this is the way how this uh, trending recording will be done manually. Uh, the same procedure here. We are able to we're able to find a valid configuration of online or offline trends in the web HMI loaded from the PLC. We have the same procedure using offsets um, and we now made a merge um, of both these lists and this is the result. We can see that uh, we have imported automatically trend record configuration. So our SCADA server is now set and we can move over to uh, create um, the HMI. So we will add uh, graphical objects to display uh, our alarm lists and our historical trends. For this we take um, a macro from uh, the macro library. We go to the alarming directory and choose uh, the macro alarming uh, history online. There are several times but uh, history online is the one that um, is mostly used, which gives us a live um, overview of all incoming um, alarms and their states. So this will add the macro. In this macro dialog uh, you can configure uh, a lot of details, but basically uh, you just have to click OK and you're set. So this is the alarm list object. We'll just put it uh, in the right place and then we will continue um, with the trend view. We'll put the trend view on, on, on the second uh, side and choose from the trend subdirectory. There is different types of trend um, trending objects too. Uh, we'll choose the uh, offline uh, trend macro, uh, place it on our view and now enter the configuration by double clicking the object. So now uh, in this object we uh, can add uh, the trend lock numbers that we have previously uh, defined uh, or automatically imported by our harvesting. So we begin with the trend number, uh, trend track number one. Uh, we choose uh, the minimum and maximum, so this one goes between minus one and one. And we choose a color for that and add it to the object. We do the same for a uh, trend um, number two and also for, for trends for, from the Phoenix PLC, which is the trend number 11 and 12. We put a color to that too and choose the respective minimum and maximum area. We also choose for the automatic y-axis description. Uh, so this will show a y-axis description for each trend track individually. So this is the configuration. We now make a build all um, of our project and we'll then deploy it to the SCADA web server, which is located on this PC. So now this is the build all procedure ongoing, generating HTML5 code. After this is done, it will open dialog um, where we can directly copy into the working directory um, of our SCADA web server. So this is the working directory and it will now copy the complete project into uh, this working directory. Uh, now uh, we open the tray icon app of the SCADA web server and stop the web server and restart it in order to update our trend and alarm logging configuration. So the update is done, the server is running again and we can now have a look at our project. So we open it in our browser as HTML5 and we already have some incoming alarms of um, our PLC. On the right, I have a, a microbrowser that has direct access to the Phoenix PLC and I will be able to trigger the alarming conditions um, directly to the PLC. And we see that our centralized logger on the SCADA system um, 
finds these alarms and puts it in historical uh, recording. We are also able to switch now to our trend view. So this trend uh, control, uh, we add all the tracks that we want to see and we initialize the loading of this trend and we see that there is already plenty of recordings done. We can zoom in uh, into the details, we can scroll, uh, we can uh, select at a certain uh, position and see uh, using this ruler function uh, the actual values of each trend separately. It is possible to modify um, the properties of each trend track, so to change, for instance, the minimum or maximum for one trend individually. And um, this is also directly, the minimum and maximums are also directly displayed uh, on the y-axis on the left. So we have now changed from 0 to 200 for the blue trend. So you could see in this uh, example how easy it is to set up a centralized uh, trend and alarm recording, trend alarm logging uh, using Spider Control Scaler. The idea behind Spider Control is to reuse everything an engineer has done in the past. Don't do um, one thing twice. Reuse everything. And Spider Control allows you not only to reuse all uh, components that you ever did, they also run on all target systems. You can have it it's running on HTML5 and you can have it running on our scale system. So this is why we say uh, with Spider Control discover the future of HMI and Scalar. So if you would like to try this by yourself, uh, you can download uh, a sample uh, code, a sample HMI editor of Spider Control on our website www.spidercontrol.net. Thank you very much.